Up next, we have um, our spot for our top tier sponsor, iTential. Um, I just want to give a brief shout out to, it, it, this has been more than a financial contribution from iTential. Um, Chris, um, Kristen, others have just come along and saying, how can we help? How can we align? What does this look like going forward? Um, it wasn't just about writing a check and uh, they really played a huge role in making all this happen. Chris um, is a co-founder of iTential, is a CTO, has been doing this stuff a long time and I'm really looking forward to his comments. So come on up, Chris. All right, I appreciate the introduction, Scott. So um, I'm gonna start off with some frameworks. I was thinking about frameworks for NAF that would really help describe where we're at with automation and John mentioned Wordly maps earlier, um, fairly complicated topic. So I took a two dimensional model of this thinking moving from the concept of idea all the way to the commoditization. Um, the previous discussions have been really great uh, opening remarks for this as we talk about DIY, orchestration, et cetera. So, when we really think about ideation, um, we really talk about moving into building it ourselves because the products don't exist in the marketplace. Um, as we move into the productization, ultimately we commoditize things. And I think we really need to think about the aspects of automation and what makes sense for us to move together towards commodities so we can start to invest and innovate on top of that. So if you look at the IT and cloud uh, areas, I think we've done a pretty good job, right? I can get VMs, I can get containers, I can get these from multiple places. Um, we're still adding to that, but if we look at infrastructure as code and some of the concepts we've talked before, we're really looking at that still being a DIY aspect. So I took an attempt to move some of our networking concepts that we've talked about today. I've heard Jinja templates, I've heard Ansible. Um, when we think about what we've commoditized, it's a lot of pipelines, it's a lot of code repositories, it's a lot of Python. But we really, I think we really need to think and, and challenge ourselves with, with what we can move towards, towards that. So at the same time, we're dealing with a level of complexity. So we talk about data centers, we've talked about switches today, but we like to talk about the fact that our network's exploding on the internet. So today, we're not just dealing with routers and switches, we're dealing with cloud networking, we're dealing with connectivity, IXC, um, et cetera. So we have to rationalize the commoditization of the network with the level of complexity that we have to deal with today. So why are we stuck? Um, we like to talk about device by device configuration. Um, I heard NetConf Yang, uh, Ubiquity um, earlier today. Um, data models are unique. We have to talk about how we deal with systems and APIs. Uh, we really have to talk about how we converge CLI and API into a constant um, network automation and orchestration strategy. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the attempts we've, we've made as a group, right? So we've looked at abstractions, um, and when I'm looking to abstract, you know, maybe a Cisco and Arista VLAN, um, I think we've, we've figured out how to do that. Um, but when I start to look at cloud networking and I take, I don't know, a VPC, um, and I take a, 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 a secure policy, the question is how do I abstract that? because we move from kind of an apple and a pear construct with uh, abstractions to maybe an apple and a shoe. So we have to decide like how is this gonna work? Um, also we've talked about sources of truth. Um, the word single sometimes is left off. Um, if I'm dealing with spreadsheets and sticky notes, moving to a database with an API is a great accomplishment. Um, but again, if I start to add AWS and Zscaler, the question is how does this expand? Um, so these are great notions that as we expand them, the question is how useful are they and, and how kind of universal um, can they be? Um, we usually joke about like when I log into AWS console, I never say that's wrong. It's, it's always right. It is the source of truth. So the question is how do we federate this in real time and complement it with the databases and the network sources of truth for the things that don't have uh, those sources of truth? Um, a lot of people desire standardization. Um, we've talked about standard data models. We've talked about standard APIs. Um, I think an example that's really worked well um, is MEF with Elon services, Ethernet services. They can, we can buy and sell from different service providers and as an end users, as an end user, I can expect to receive a similar service. Um, but when we start talking about standardization of things like SD-WAN, I don't know how many people have used different SD-WAN products in, in the market, but there is no standard, right? 
Uh, the speed at which today's network services are being built on the cloud will continue to accelerate. Um, and we have to figure out how to deal with this without expecting our vendors to, to kind of collapse uh, their APIs together. And I think we can look at our cloud friends. You'll see kind of a pattern in my presentation of looking at how we combine network and cloud because I think we can learn a lot about the cloud operating model and how we apply it to networking. Um, when it comes to, I spoke before about the commoditization of virtual machines and containers in most cloud environments. Uh, we talk about cloud management platforms. That was a huge thing a couple years ago for those that participated in it. But we're constantly trying to abstract things that are trying to differentiate from us, right? So we have to decide how do we move forward but expect continued innovation from underneath us. So we have this uneven landscape. We have the desire to move uh, the market and evolve towards a commodity product, understanding that we want our vendors to innovate. And I think as that's, that's a challenge for NAF, and that's pretty much how we need to think about it. So I love the comments on the automation and orchestration earlier. So we have to take this kind of larger problem domain, and we have to break it into pieces. So really separating automation from orchestration, I think, is a very powerful aspect. It takes a very um, large, sometimes daunting challenge, and we can break it into bite-sized pieces and kind of bring the entire organization along to help us. So we talk about automation domains um, a lot of times, and these domains might have particular network elements, particular tooling. The one thing I would say here is we talk a lot about cultural challenges and the adoption of automation, and I don't want to make this about tools, but by trying to provide ubiquitous tooling and ways of operating, we really generate a lot of friction in our organizations. And the question is, how do we allow these teams to use their, their preferred tool? Um, you know, if I go to my cloud team and I say we're going to take away CDK and Terraform, uh, we talked about pitchforks earlier, that's not going to happen. So the question is, how do I adopt that tooling and how do I orchestrate it with my other automated domains? So just a couple questions here. As we think about automation domains, people said, is it a technology thing? Can it be multi-vendor? Can it span? It's really, it's particular to your, to, your, um, to your enterprise or SP, but at the end of the day, we think about automation domains focusing on a technology. Um, you won't see the word vendor very much from me. So a particular automation technology, a method of execution. How am I gonna actually uh, express my changes to this, to this piece of infrastructure? What are my data structures? Maybe they're not similar, but within an automation domain, the, uh, the variety that you're gonna have is gonna be manageable. Um, and then what is your source of truth? So I just kind of put two examples up here, maybe a data center and a cloud example. And I would expect these two teams to be able to use these tools um, to provide excellent, excellent automation. And the question is, how do we orchestrate this um, together? And back to that kind of reducing the friction by using the right tool and the right job for each part of the organization. So as we get into um, you know, thinking about moving from Python to platforms, um, if you buy into the automation domain concept and the desire to orchestrate it together, um, we like to talk about how do we engage our actual end users? Who is consuming this automation? Um, you know, is it a ticket? Is it an API call? And orchestration, by collapsing these automation domains together, it allows us to work with our end users in a more uh, meaningful way. So maybe they're coming in through tickets, maybe they're line of business uh, making API calls, but we can really standardize how we run automation through orchestration while uh, creating kind of like a decoupled environment for each domain uh, to move at their own speed. So NAF, we have a couple standards bodies that we already work with, right, as a group. So the question is, is where do we fit? Um, and I think that's a big part of these two days is to figure out where do we spend our time and energy as an organization to drive automation forward? Um, you know, a lot of themes uh, leading up to this, thinking about it, you know, how do we get started? How do we get our teams funded? Um, what partners support my vision? Um, one thing I always ask for is if we can just ask our vendors to publish their APIs and not consider it IP, it would help us out uh, a lot. Uh, almost going back to the cloud and SD-WAN environments, um, through standardization and abstraction, um, there's certain people that think we need that to be able to automate. Um, I think what the cloud has taught us is if we make these APIs public, well-documented, innovation will happen. And I trust this group and the community to be able to innovate on top of APIs. So I think a couple of these manufactured guardrails we can really let down uh, and really move at the speed of the business. So um, 
Looking at the vendor landscape that came to NAF, I think it's uh, really awesome. I think that you see kind of target architecture uh, vendors here. You see people that are innovating, hopefully with you. Um, one thing that we think is really important is we would like these vendors to work together to help you provide solutions. So we don't think there's a need for system integrators to make these vendors work together. We all publish APIs. We build technical integrations. Um, and you know, just a smattering of the vendors that you can that we already have published APIs for. So this is more than just interfaces. These are pre-built integrations so that you can innovate on top. So um, you know, the target ecosystem uh, for NAF really needs to work together. Um, we need a lot of input and feedback from the community of what do you want to see um, from your partners um, as we build build products together. And with that, I will take questions. No questions. So, question. Oh, here we go. Hi, uh, Brandon Bennett. Um, so I, I really like the, if we come together, we can help change the minds of vendors. I guess what is the, how do we establish that? It kind of sounds like, hey, a vendor, if you create API, we'll, we'll show you the, the worth. But there's a lot of different things. Like in the last talk, I heard um, a lot around testing. Um, most of the time, I just want a control plane to test with. I, you know, Container Labs is great, but 99% of the time, I'm bringing up an entire VM with an entire data plane. I just want a container uh, that I can spin up in CI, toss my stuff against, tear it down. Um, there's one vendor, Nokia does that rel, <laughs> right? And nobody else does. How do we as a community, how does NAF as a community help how do we organize and then actually push some of these through, saying that, hey, I'm a small organization, you're a small organization, but together we can do more, I guess, if you provide us better automation opportunities. So I'm usually pretty hard on equipment providers, personally. Um, but I do think over the last couple of years, the level of, I would say, programmability uh, that has been pro provided is, is, you know, far exceeds whether it's NetConf or a controller, if I think back to 15 and 16, um, the lack of program programmability was one of the main um, preventers of automation. Um, I think, you know, especially today, hearing the need to do validation to accelerate automation um, is a theme. Um, so I think it would be very interesting to look at why the programmability came about. Like, was that, was that market evolution? Uh, was that buying forces? Was that uh, user feedback? Um, and how do we do a similar thing around testing? And if I go all the way back to kind of the beginning with the, the wordly mapping type thing, the question is, is, you know, when we're moving from, you, it's very much a DIY thing because you're building it yourself, right? So what does the community need to do? Because market forces are going to move us to the right. The speed at which that happens is driven a lot by us working together. If, if everything looks like a snowflake, it's more difficult. But if you just say, you know, I need a container that I can run in Container Lab that does not recre require me to log into a GUI to, to copy and paste a license file, then that would be really great. Yeah, yeah I think um, just as a side note, I, I've also found that when we're looking to purchase new equipment, yeah. it's almost, uh, despite how much I try to push back on our networking teams, like automation is always the last thing. Like it's cost and speeds and feeds, right? So I'm wondering, as a community, can we help push for this that is not tied to spend? So I don't know. Thank you. Let's do it. Awesome. Thank you.